how do the various elements of a control system behave when they undergo a rotational motion? Well, my name is Rishi Ramju and welcome to the Backbench Engineering community where I make engineering easy for you. So, let us ask yourself that obvious question. How do the various elements of a particular control system behave when they undergo a rotational motion? Well, let's find out. So, in the case of a rotational mechanical control system, the first main element here is the equivalent of mass. So, in the case of a translational mechanical system, we saw a particular mass of mass m. But here we can't take that mass in the case of rotational mechanical control system. So here the equivalent of mass in the case here in the case of rotational mechanical control system is moment of inertia. Moment of inertia. So moment of inertia is actually an interesting term. So here let us consider a particular ring of mass say m. Then the moment of inertia of this particular ring having a mass m and radius r along this particular axis is given as i is equal to m r square. But rather if we are taking the moment of inertia along this particular axis like this then the moment of inertia would have been i is equal to m r squared by 2. So this is what you refer to as moment of inertia that is the equivalent of mass in the case of a rotational motion. So here in the case of moment of inertia when we apply a particular torque on a particular object then the restoring torque that is developed is given as torque tau is equal to moment of inertia i into alpha which is the angular acceleration. So here alpha is given as the second order derivative of the angular displacement. So this could be written as tau is equal to i into d squared theta by dd squared. So this is the restoring torque that is developed in the case of a particular object when we apply a particular torque. As simple as that. So now next let us see a particular damper or a particular dash pot. So here in the case of a damper first let us assume that we have a particular wall like this and let us assume that a particular damper is connected like this. Okay. So now let us assume a rotating torque like this in this particular direction like this. Okay. So now when a rotating torque is applied over here then what we observe is that this would rotate with an angular velocity omega and it would undergo an angular displacement say theta and this torque let it be say tau. And now because of this torque a restoring torque would be developed over here. So here let the damping constant of this particular damper be given as B. So therefore in such kind of a case the restoring torque that is produced in this particular damper when we apply a particular rotational torque over here is given as torque tau is equal to the damping constant b into the angular velocity omega. But we know for a fact that the angular velocity omega is the first order derivative of the angular displacement. So therefore torque tau is equal to b into d theta by dt. So now in this case what we observe is that this particular damper is fixed onto a particular wall. But what if this wall was not there? What if we are just taking a particular damper like this and it is not fixed on this particular side. Here it is free. So therefore when we apply a particular torque over here what we observe is that this would move with a particular velocity omega 1 undergoing a particular displacement theta 1. But here also what we would observe is that this part would also rotate with a particular angular velocity omega 2 and undergo an angular displacement theta 2. So in such kind of a case the restoring torque that is developed over here is given as torque tau is equal to the damping constant B of this particular damper multiplied by the difference in the angular velocities that is omega 1 minus omega 2. So therefore the torque tau is given as B into d by dt of theta 1 minus theta 2. 
So this is the restoring torque that is developed in the case of a particular damper which is free on both the sides. So now next let us see the case of a particular spring that is attached to a particular wall. So here in this particular spring when we apply a particular rotating force like this what we observe is that this would rotate with a particular angular velocity omega and undergo a particular angular displacement theta. So in such kind of a case what we observe is that if the spring constant of this particular spring is k then the restoring torque that is developed in the spring is given as torque tau is equal to k into theta. But, 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 if this particular wall was absent, that is, if this particular wall was not there, and if we take a particular spring that is free on both the sides, then if we now apply a particular rotational force, say to, and then what we observe is that it would move or rotate with a particular angular velocity omega and undergo an angular displacement theta. But here, this portion would also move with another angular velocity, say omega 2 and undergo an angular displacement say theta 2. So let this be omega 1 and theta 1 then this would be omega 2 and theta 2. So therefore in such kind of a case the torque the restoring torque developed is given as torque tau is equal to k into theta 1 minus theta 2. So this thus is simply how the basic elemental components, the moment of inertia, a damper and a particular spring behave in the case of a rotational mechanical control system. As simple as that guys, there's nothing more to it, as simple as that. So I hope you guys now have a clear understanding of what you refer to as rotational mechanical control systems. And if you guys found this video informative, please do hit the like button and join this community by hitting that subscribe button. We'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So stay tuned, stay subscribed. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.